Good morning, church. My name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Kirksville, Missouri. And it is a snowy week here. I don't know where you are today. If you were in the Kirksville area, I pray that you're safe and uh, at home and with a warm cup of hot chocolate or tea or something like that. But you're not having to travel much in this. It's a little treacherous out there, although the roads have been cleared pretty well. So, uh, but I'm, I just want to take a few minutes to to share with you some thoughts and this a daily devotional and I pray that it's uh, comforting to you and gives you some encouragement in your life and your walk. Um, today I want to talk about this aspect of a call that we get called by God for different things and uh, I think that sometimes this idea of call is um, meant is described as something too specific and that you have to have uh, hear some audible voice of God or some sign that is just uh, unmistakable in order for you to really uh, accept that God is calling you to do something. And uh, sometimes we get this idea of people that are called into the ministry of the priesthood as, uh, as some of the clergy here at the church have been. Um, but that doesn't mean that everyone is called into that type of ministry. But all of us who believe are called into following what Christ would have us to do. Uh, whatever we do for the least of these, we do for Christ. That's what he said himself. And it's very telling that we um, that we that we allow ourselves to be changed to be the people that God would have us to be. Um, there's a there's a song that um, that I want to talk about a little bit that's uh, that is in the United Methodist Hymnal. It came out in the what's still called by some people the new United Methodist Hymnal, which came out in 1989. So it's not certainly not new anymore but it replaced the one from the 60s, which replaced the one from probably the 30s or 40s. Um, so we have several different versions of hymnals lying around, but the one that we've been using since 1989 is, is the current one. And when that hymn book was published, um, there was a few new songs that were added. And one of the ones that was very popular right away was a, was a hymn called Here I Am Lord. And Here I Am Lord was written in 1981 by Reverend Daniel Schutte, uh, who was born in 1947 and is still living as far as I know. But uh, Reverend Schutte is also a Catholic, he is a Catholic priest, and Father Schutte is a native of Wisconsin. He's from Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin, and currently and is a Roman Catholic priest. He started off as a church music director. He's currently the director of music at the University of San Francisco, um, it's, which is a Jesuit institute. and. Um, he tours extensively as a Christian artist. And uh, on, of his many hymns that he's written, Here I Am, Lord, is the most commonly sung. And I want to talk a little bit about this song. You probably know this song well. But the refrain to Here I Am, Lord, recalls to us Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, which reads, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And uh, this is something that's a, um, a response that we are called to make, but also a scary response. Sometimes we don't know what God is calling us into doing, uh, and yet we, we listen for that call and we listen for the direction that we get from God. There's an interesting part of this hymn that uh, it's probably the only hymn I can think of that is, done, is uh, written this way. But there's a change of voice between the verses or the stanzas and the refrain or the chorus. Um, where the stanzas speak from the perspective of God as in first person, that God is speaking. And then when you get to the refrain, it's our response is from the perspective of the singer of the hymn offering their lives to God. And uh, it's, it's just an interesting interplay between the verses and the chorus. Um, the song calls us to transformation. It calls us to be different than where, what we might naturally be as human beings. Uh, God transformed the darkness into light is what the first stanza talks about. And then he melts the hearts of stone with love in stanza two and nourishes the poor and the lame with the finest bread, which is a clear reference to the Holy Communion. And I got to think about how this song relates to um, our worship services here at church. And in fact, starting this week, we're beginning a, uh, a series on listening for the call of God and how we, we're called to respond. And uh, that's something that we try and, well, we do have in every every single worship service. I, I'm not sure, because it's so uh, repetitive, it may not seem something that we are actually doing. 
But you know how some churches have what's called an altar call at the end of every worship service. Well, we have an altar call as well. It just doesn't look the same. Uh, at the end of our worship services or after the, the, the sharing of the, of the, uh, the word and the, and the message, we have a prayer confession. And a prayer confession is where we open up our hearts and say, God, uh, search me and know me. And uh, if I need to be changed, help me to change. And then we have the Holy Communion, which represents receiving that grace of God that assures us of our forgiveness. And then we have um, a call to action as part of the benediction, the call to, to do things differently in your life, maybe to look at uh, where people are oppressed and needy, where people are hungry and need clothing or, or food or something else, that we can be part of the solution versus continuing to be part of the problem. Uh, and so this is uh, the way the way our worship services flow. And, it's something that each each of us, each and every week, are challenged to be more like Christ, to do the things that God would have us to do, uh, to really show love and grace to others in uh, profound and godly ways, not only in our own capacity, but made possible through the grace of God that is given to each of us. And so, to make a, make it a point short, shorter here is that we're all called in some way or another. And I think that's... Um, that's maybe hard for some people to, to reconcile, but all of us are, have a call in our lives to be more loving, to be more caring, to be more grace-filled, to be more forgiving, to be um, aware of the problems around us, because the world certainly needs more people who are merciful and caring in all kinds of different situations. So I'd like to share with you, here I am, Lord, and I pray that you hear God's voice through this song, not from my voice, but God speaking to you on how we can answer, here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, the That's your response when you hear this call of God to maybe do something that may seem somewhat ordinary, but in, the, in this whole scope of the world, it's extraordinary that we look outside of ourselves. We look for those who are truly struggling and help them in ways that maybe they're, they're not accustomed to or they're not expecting, and certainly uh, something that is full of grace as we each go through life with the path that God has laid out for us seeking to be more like Christ in everything we do. Go in peace and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.